everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, as I've mentioned before, we do have a bit of a hard stop on today's events just because uh, Mr. Bettman and Mr. Daly need to move on to some other things that we have going on. Uh, so I'd like to welcome uh, NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman and Deputy Commissioner uh, Bill Daly. And without further ado, we'll uh, get towards questions. Whoever has their hand, they'll ask one. And then if we get through all of them, there'll be a second one. But uh, please just keep your questions to one at a time for now. Go ahead. Identify, yeah, identify yourself, please, so they know who's asking the question. Uh, Sean Reynolds with Sportsnet. I, I was wondering, from your perspective or what you've gleaned from this, this is a fan base that packed this building for nine straight years. What's your understanding of what's changed and why people are staying away? I'm glad you asked that question because uh, I think there was a lot of speculation as to why I was here today and even what I'm thinking in anticipation of being here today. Uh, this is a place, Winnipeg, where hockey matters. Uh, I believe that this is a strong NHL market. Uh, I believe that ownership has made extraordinary commitments uh, to the Jets, to this arena, to the downtown area, involving hundreds of millions of dollars. And I'm not sure why people are now speculating that somehow they're not going to be here. Uh, at the end of the day, we could go through a litany of reasons that either are true or speculated to be true as to how the attendance situation got to where it is. Kind of doesn't really matter because teams go through different ups and downs. Uh, I believe that the season ticket base and the attendance will evolve back uh, to where it was. I was quoted in 2011 saying, uh, for this to work well, the building's got to be full, and that's true. And I know that uh, Mark Chipman and David Thompson aren't interested in just surviving in the NHL. They want to thrive. Uh, along the lines of how the team's playing this year. And this will get sorted out. Uh, I don't view this as a crisis, but I do believe, as with any team in any market, there needs to be collaboration uh, between the community and the fan base and the club. And I believe ultimately it will be here. And Mr. Bettman, Richard Cluche from 680 CJOB. Very interested in your role and Mr. Daly's role in those meetings today and the message from the NHL that you're saying to people here because as you know there is a spirited fan base here that knows about that that deal we made with you in 2011 and that somehow we all chained our computers together to get tickets and that somehow maybe the corporates aren't playing the role that they should be. What's your role in messaging today? Well, we, we weren't delivering messaging today. We sat on a number of panels with Mark Chipman and with Sarah, and we answered questions and addressed what was on people's mind. But the message is no different than what I just said in response to the first question. You want to add anything? No. no. We, you know, listen, obviously the attendance needs to improve, but it, it will. I have a confidence in the organization. And as importantly, I have confidence in this community. Gary, Jacob Stoller from the Hockey News. I'm curious, in meeting with corporate leaders today in Winnipeg, have you, what have you learned or what was the conversation like? And did anything that you hear surprise you? The, everybody seems to be operating under the assumption that we're here today to address a particular need or concern. Uh, I try to get to as many buildings throughout the league in the course of every season. If you remember correctly, I was here a year ago for Philippine Heritage Night. Uh, I'm here to visit, to take in a game, to talk to the media, talk to season ticket holders, talk to the corporate community, which is what I do everywhere I go. Go ahead, Jeff. Josh Crabb with uh, CBC Manitoba. Commissioner, um, Mark Chipman has been quoted as saying he wants season tickets to improve, uh, get back to the 13,000. Mark, is there sort of a timeline that you would like to see in terms of things improving here and getting attendance back to where it was? Actually, we all do. I share Mark's view, but Mark 
isn't issuing any deadlines. Uh, he's focused on what he can do to make sure the fan base is maximally engaged, and I applaud the effort. But again, we're not operating under the sword of Damocles or on a razor's edge. This is part of the evolution of what franchises sometimes go through. Uh, I remember a number of other Canadian franchises, for example, some of them considered to be small market, where the season ticket base aged out and they had to go rebuild it with younger fans. It happens. Let's be clear about something, okay? I believe that this is a strong NHL market and it will adjust. Hi, Jeff Kerbison from Manitoba Inc. Magazine. You mentioned evolution. I'm wondering what, you, what your opinion is of the evolution of True North, which 12 years ago was sort of a one-trick pony. It had a hockey team. It had mm -hmm. a building. And now it is a multi-billion multi dollar real estate developer with eight buildings downtown, of which the True more, North... More to come. <laughs> right, of which Canada Life Center is one. Yes. And there's certainly going to be synergies between the hockey team and the hotel and that sort of thing. And that's why, for anybody suggesting that the agenda for ownership is other than focused on Winnipeg, is silly. Because at the end of the day, look at the hundreds of millions of dollars they've invested in the team, in the building, uh, in the building that they've built around here, and what they're going to be doing on the north side of Portage. I mean, that's why I'm, I'm, this, I'm kind of... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Mystified at the tension that seems to have developed here. And by the way, this is a team, when they, if they make the playoffs this year, which looks like they're going to, would be six out of the last seven years. Their cap team, the star players who had an opportunity to go elsewhere decided to stay here. Those are the substantive things that deliver the message that everybody seems to be focused on. Want to add anything? No, I mean, I, what I'd say is this is a, a team that's widely regarded uh, around the league as a model franchise. Uh, well run from top to bottom, uh, has a competitive hockey team, puts a competitive hockey team on the ice, spends to the cap, uh, but also invests, as Gary mentioned, in the community um, and all, all their charitable initiatives and, and uh, investment uh, in the city. So this is, uh, this w we wish we had 32 of these. Hi, Melissa Ridgen from Global News. I just had a question. This is actually for both of you. Um, you know, you've grown this league in big, beautiful, sunny places, uh, but in places like Winnipeg, where it's like tens of thousands of kids uh, in this province and, uh, and the surrounding area are playing this sport, how important is it to you as human beings to see the league be strong in places like this? If, if I didn't believe in places like Winnipeg, we never would have bought the Jets back. In addition, the industry growth fund in terms of grassroots initiatives, whether it's the Hockey Academy or Camp um, Manitou. Manitou, Manitou or whatever the other things that we've, we've invested over $6 million. So we, we stand by our commitment and we're greatly gladdened to see all of the work that's being done at the grassroots level. We, we're here, meaning the NHL, because we want to be. Yeah, I don't have anything to add to that, as Gary said at the start. I mean, hockey matters here, and that's important to us. Um, so Winnipeg matters to us. And the Jets matter to Winnipeg, so everybody matters. How then do you... Who are you? Uh, sorry. <laughs> Paul Friesen, Winnipeg's son. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I knew that, but I thought if everybody else <laughs> was identifying themselves, you should too. Appreciate that. Given all you've said then, how do you explain Mark Chipman saying that uh, given the current situation, this will, quote, not going to work over the long haul? What, what I believe Mark means by that, uh, and I think he's been pretty clear because I've heard him say it repeatedly, he doesn't want to just be a member of the NHL. He wants a team that has the foundation for success. He wants to be competitive every year. He'd like to bring the Stanley Cup to Winnipeg. And so... If the team is going to have the resources and the ability to compete at the highest level uh, and spend to the cap as they have, uh, it's be important for the building to be full. Given the re oh, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, you can have a follow-up because I made you identify yourself. So you can have a follow-up. Just one, though. Yeah. Oh. Given the uh, state of their ownership, as strong as ownership gets in professional sports, mm -hmm. why uh, is this even an issue? I'm not sure the question that you're asking uh, why leads you from point A. Uh, just, just because you perceive somebody to have resources, the fact is this is a collaborative effort. And people who own franchises want to understand that they're being supported. It's a, it's a joint effort. It's not one-sided. Scott Billick, Winnipeg Sun. Yeah, got that out of the way. Um, just wondering, what's the target then? Like, what do you need to see in terms of corporate sponsorship? It's not what I need to see. I well, mean, what, what what you want to do is have a franchise that has robust support from all of the places that support comes from, whether it's the business community buying tickets, whether it's the business community advertising and promoting uh, and activating around the club. And in that regard. Uh, the club has gotten, I believe, very robust support. You also want to see buildings full. By the way, I think the players want to see the building full. You know, for somebody who spent a few weeks in the bubble watching our game in empty buildings, our players, our game draws an enormous amount of energy from fans in the building. And having a packed building obviously gives you more energy than a building that isn't packed. So 15% corporate support is it, robust? It, well, no, no, no. I was talking about the advertising. The way the season ticket base got created is probably an anomaly because well, they sell out in 15 minutes. Um, and so there wasn't a need or an opportunity for corporate support at the beginning. But again, that's where I started. How we got here doesn't matter. It's how we evolved from here. And I have every confidence in this market and this organization. Judy Owen, Canadian Press. When Mark talks about not having a, a large corporate season ticket base, what did the business leaders you talked to today say about why some of the reasons are for that? Well, they, the didn't, uh, they didn't ultimately have the opportunity. If you remember how this started in 2011, we announced on May 30. May 31st? Yeah, May, May 31st, 31st that the team was coming, and a day or so later, it was go to your computers and sign up, and individuals did that in a way that kind of precluded, at the time, corporate purchasing. And if they had it to do over, maybe they would have held back four or 5,000 tickets and sold them as part of corporate packages. They didn't, but that's history. So we are where we are, and we move forward. But you want to follow up, huh? I gave, just because I gave him one. No, go ahead. <laughs> but the decrease has been since the pandemic, too, is, is one. No, but the pandemic, you know, that's it. Again, it doesn't matter how we got here, okay? The, we, you know, some people say people don't like to come downtown at night. Some people say <laughs> the team's performance should have been better, even though it's been pretty darn good. Some people say the season ticket drive initially was no good. Some people say it was the pandemic. All our clubs have dealt with the pandemic and it may have impacted some markets more than others. But again, we're, we are where we are. So w we focus on the fact that we believe in this market, ownership believes in this market. This is a strong organization that will do what it needs to do to adjust, and I believe this community will adjust. Go ahead, Murat. Um, hi, this is Murat Atesh from The Athletic. Um, certainly the, the message of confidence is, is well received. I'm curious, are the Winnipeg Jets, with their current sales, a recipient of revenue sharing? And yeah, They have been and they will continue to be. When those numbers shift, um, what is the pressure or communication like within the Board of Governors who I'm sure would like every building to sell out and not have to pay that sort of thing? You can answer that. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I, I think our, our revenue sharing system is, is well established and, and we vet it with the all our clubs on a regular basis, and and uh, um, you know it's really a function of league HRR and and how the numbers come out. So I don't think it it comes to the scrutiny of w whether you're filling your building necessarily or not. Um, you know there are many factors associated with with how much revenue sharing the team gets. And if your question is somehow suggesting or implying that at the board level there's a concern about this franchise? The answer is absolutely not. Richard Cloutier, 680 CGOB. So what's your final message then to fans who are 
you know, have had some anxiety over the last 72 hours. And when do we get the draft here? Uh, get over your anxiety and come to games. No better way to deal with anxiety than rooting for your hometown team. Uh, actually, when that hotel across the street finally gets built, I think we'll have a better opportunity to focus on the draft. We need a little more hotel space. I, that building, the new hotel, got hung up during COVID. I understand the spring they're supposed to start constructing it, and then we can figure out what to do. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate your game. cooperation. <laughs>